Hi, Lonnie Vaughn here from Emotiva Audio Corporation. Sitting here in one of our theaters here at the office, and the reason I'm here is I actually want to walk through and show you guys Dirac today. Okay, so to get the ball rolling, brief overview so that you understand what it is we're going to be doing and why. The XMC1 is going to be talking to the computer, and the computer is going to be talking back to the XMC1. They don't connect directly to each other, they connect via the in-house network in your house. The way to get the uh, XMC1 up and rolling is just plug in uh, an Ethernet jack right into the back of the unit, and then it'll automatically get its own IP address and it'll be ready to roll. Your laptop or your base computer can either be plugged directly into an Ethernet jack as well, or it can be run via Wi-Fi. Now, if you're running Wi-Fi, make sure you've got a really strong connection because there's a lot of data that's running through and back and forth between the two units. So if you've got a, an iffy Wi-Fi signal uh, wherever your room happens to be, I highly recommend that you run a hard line to your computer. But once both of these are on the network and they're both up and talking to each other, then everything will run smooth as glass and we're going to step right into getting the microphone hooked up, where you start, where you put the mic, getting the software started and everything. So on to the next step. Okay, so here we have the Emotiva EMM1. It's a calibrated microphone that you're going to use for your testing and the other end of the microphone cable that we provide for you. Once you uh, plug them together, which is just a standard three pin connection, you're going to put it into your microphone holder and get it all set for the first position to do your uh, measurement and your testing throughout the room. Big tip for you guys, once you get your microphone set and you get it all plugged up and you're ready to roll and you're going to set your level calibration before you do that or before you start running your test, one thing I want you to remember is this. The reason that microphone's pointed straight up is so that it not only picks up the speaker, but it picks up the entire room as it interacts with the system, which that then allows Dirac to do compensation for what's going on around it. One thing that's going to really affect the way this works is if you're in the picture, meaning if you're sitting in the chair next to the mic or if you're even holding it in your hand or whatever, you're going to skew the results of what's going on. So big tip, put it in a mic holder, get it set in position because you're going to do nine different points and then move away from the mic so that it doesn't pick you up. It picks up the speaker and it picks up the room and you get your best results that way. Okay, so now we're ready to start doing mic placement. And mic placement is one of those things that there's a big debate about, do you put it in the center of the room, do you put it in the side of the room, where, you know, where do you sit, all that kind of stuff. I wanna be honest with you and tell you, put it in the sweet spot. The sweet spot being wherever you sit. If in this particular instance, there are two people primarily in the theater, you wanna set it up, starting off with the first position in between the two, because this whole thing is gonna be the sweet spot. And how it does that is Dirac does nine different measurements at different varying heights. So the first position is always the center of the sweet spot. Now if you've got a small area like a chair, then you want to start in the center of the chair. If you're doing a couch or a big entertainment center, whatever, you have to adjust those positions according to however big the area is that you primarily use. But it's always going to be nine measurements, first one being in the center, and the first one the reason I'm sitting here is so that you can get a representation of about how high up you want it to be. Because the first set of measurements come just below ear level, and then the second set are a little bit higher and behind you. And they're all represented within the software, and you can flip between the views and see the exact position and location for doing those nine measurements. So we're gonna get started now that we got our mic here, now we're gonna go on to level calibration. Okay, so here's the microphone cable that we supply with the unit. It is a precision A to D converter that's gonna take uh, the actual audio from the mic and convert it to digital signals so that the computer can do the processing. And all you have to do with this thing is just plug it into your handy dandy USB port on your laptop or your base computer, whichever one you're using, and you're ready to go. Now, quick tip, questions already come up. Since it's USB, why can't we just plug it into the front of the processor? It's not designed to operate that way. All the calibrations done or the computations are done within the laptop. So the mic goes into the laptop. Now we're getting into the fun part and that is we're gonna get ready and set up the system to actually run our measurements. So the first thing you do, you're gonna start your program. 
the program is going to go then out onto your network and it's going to look and find the XMC just like it did here. It says, do you want to use this one? And we're going to say yes, because that is actually the one that we've got set up here in the theater. So there it goes. It said, hey, here's my XMC1. It's going to ask the XMC1 what kind of speaker config has already been pre-programmed into it. So moving on, we're going to come down here to the proceed. This is where we start to set up the level calibration of the system. And if you'll notice from the very beginning, the mic gain is cranked all the way up and the output level for the test tones is turned way, way down. And that's just for your safety so that once you're, as you're setting your system up, it, that you don't accidentally just get these loud bursts or anything through the test tones. We want to bring the mic gain down to a point where the actual room ambient noise is basically minus 24 or less. But before we move on, I'm going to tell you, here's what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of the speakers, there's a little play button next to where it says test, and you're just going to click on one of them at a time, and we're going to bring the output level up till it gets into the green zone that's on the meters. As long as it's, you want to have it around the minus 12 mark, which is right in the middle of the green zone. Check each one of your speakers to make sure that the output levels are fairly consistent all the way down and not clipping beyond the green zone. You usually won't have a problem. Once you set one of them, the rest of them will probably be fine with the exception of the subwoofers because in a lot of cases, subwoofers have their own amplifiers. If they're too hot or not hot enough, go readjust the subs to bring them in line with the rest of the speakers in the system. Because if you notice, it was as it was sweeping, it would go to the minus 12 in the green zone, and that's roughly where I want all of them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just go down the line, check each one. And I'm not going to waste your time in the video here by doing that, but I can tell you that all of them are going to match because we've already gone around the room and checked the subwoofers and all the rest of the levels. So now we know that our levels are set, our microphone gain is set for optimum signals noise ratio and everything. And now it's time to actually move on to the real testing. In this window, here's where we get into microphone placement. And I want to show you a couple little tricks here. The microphone goes into the sweet spot as we discussed before. And it's set at varying heights and varying levels and it does nine different measurements. And from this, if you notice that there's a top view, a frontal view, and an oblique view. Okay, so here's our top view. In this viewpoint, or from this perspective, you'll be able to see that the microphone gets placed on a front row as well as a back row of sorts in when it's doing its nine different measurements. And right now it's pointing to the yellow dot in the center. That means that is the first microphone position. And as you run through your test, that arrow will change and go to the different ones. Now to get an idea, not just front to back as to the location of the mic, let's also go to a front view. Now, if you notice in the front view, now we have height is represented here. So as things are in the front or the back, they're either going to be lower in position or higher in position, which is easier to see, at least for me, by going to the oblique view. There you go. So taking into account, this front row is actually set on a lower plane than the back row keeping in mind that its actual physical location corresponds to the dots that you see here on the top view. So if you're ever in doubt as to where to put the microphone, you can flip through the different viewpoints and say, oh yeah, yeah, that one goes up front or to the back or it goes up higher or lower than the other one that was there. Once you get the microphone set into position, then it's time to just start testing. Now, you wanna keep it quiet in the room you don't want to talk or have a lot of background noise going on. In fact, you'd like it as quiet as possible. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do our first measurement. And once you're set, you're just going to hit start, which I'm going to do here to show you the first position as it tests. But I'm going to shut up and just let it roll. But I'm going to tell you what you'll see down here is actually the MLS pulse of it doing its measurement. So away we go. After you've done all nine positions, the very next or the last thing you're going to do 
is hit proceed. And it's gonna pop you to this screen. And what it's gonna show you is that your left and right fronts actually come across looking like this white line back here in the back, okay? You can actually click through the different speakers in your room and see what they sounded like and what measurements came up and all that good stuff if you're interested. Uh, if you're not interested and you just wanna move on, that's fine too. Once you've uh, seen what all is doing and what it actually measured for your room, just hit create filters. And at this point it goes to Dirac, it sends all that data over to Sweden and their master servers actually do all these really advanced computations and calculations and it's going to come back with the actual information that's needed for the XMC1. And you can see the progress bar at the top is running through, it's just taking, it takes a little bit of time, so just be patient. Well, as you can see, the Drac LE is an extremely powerful tool. There's a lot of things that it can do that I didn't even begin to touch today. So feel free to peruse through our website. We've got a lot more information there for you to read up about and see what all it can do. You can also get uh, the Drac full version there right off our website if you want, if you want to go in and adjust your own filters. So uh, hopefully it's been extremely helpful for you guys, and we'll see you next time.